Howdy boys and girls. Uh, had a guy kick my light on see if it helps. No. Uh, <clears throat> had a guy on a question on a video on when I'm getting into my long range series asked me uh, if I could do a video on doping the scope. Uh, this is a very overused and misused term in my opinion. Uh, might be jumping ahead of the, the where I was going with the video series, but I'll do a quick little video response. I guess it can fall in there anywhere. Because it's not that big of a deal. And it's a huge deal, but the, the term itself is not that big of a deal. Uh, I see a lot of different de word or acronyms for what DOPE stands for. Uh, data, data observed on pre of on previous engagements is the best way to put it. Uh, I've heard it you know, data on previous engagements or data on personal equipment whatever one you want to use really works. It all breaks down to knowing what your rifle has done at different times that you have shot it and how to put the clicks on the knobs on your scope based on that information so what you need to understand is there is no set quote unquote scope dope or slope dope or wind dope that you that I can tell you to put on your gun because you need to know what the gun has done in the past to know what it's going to do in the future uh, it is as bad as I have seen guys in at gun shows selling dope cards for you know this is for 223 and this is for and you know what it'll probably get you close but uh, the way you are truly going to calculate that and the way you are going to truly know what kind of dope to put on the scope is based on shots that you have taken with that gun in the past. Uh, you can do this with a book, but nowadays everybody does it with ballistic calculator uh, on a PDA or on a smartphone or whatever. Uh, there's a bunch of them out there for the Android, there's a bunch of them out there for the iPhone. I'll tell you that the ones that I have tried, the free ones, you get what, they, what you pay for, they're not really worth a whole lot. The one I use from uh, on my iPhone is called iSnipe. I don't know if there's a better one out there. It's just one that I've become very familiar with and very comfortable with. Uh, what's nice about it is it pulls, you know, the current temperature readings and current barometric pressure and all that stuff based off of weather.com. So it, it's probably, you know, short of having all the tools with you in the field to take those readings, it's probably one of the most accurate ways I've found that you can do this. But, uh, what the dope is, ultimately, is when you're getting ready to shoot any gun, you need to know what that gun has done in the past. So I know how many clicks to put on it in the future. Uh, in front of you, you'll see my, uh, that's my, I don't know if you want to call it a precision AR. Uh, that one's set up for medium range engagements out six, seven hundred yards. It's a, it's a fully suppressed barrel. Uh, registered suppressor, don't ATF, check my ATF forms before you show up on my doorstep. Uh, you know, that gun there shoots just beautiful groups at 100 yards. That'll overlap holes at 100 yards. So, I know from pulling out my ballistic computer that, you know, at, at 200 yards, I need to put two clicks on the scope up to get point of aim point of impact on my bullet at 200 yards if I'm gonna shoot 600 yards I need to put X amount of clicks on the scope and that's what doping is that is knowing how many clicks to put on the scope for different ranges uh, it's also knowing your bullet knowing the ballistic coefficient of your bullet you know what the grain weight is how fast it's moving at the, at the muzzle uh, the only true way to do that is get a chronograph or find somebody that has a chronograph. And you know, I, way I do way I do my my speeds on my bullets is I fire 12 shots. 
I throw out the high and the low, and then I do the average of the other 10. That's the way I do it. I'm not telling you that's the right way. That's just how I do it. Uh, that gives me my variances in powder. Throwing out the high and the low usually isn't a big deal, but to me that's a way to true the system. Uh, you know, I run mill dot scopes on everything I shoot. Uh, with the mill dot scopes, which I'm going to do a whole other video on mill dot scopes, but uh, you know, one of the big things problems people have with understanding mill dots is typically, especially with low dollar scopes, like on that rifle, that is not an expensive scope on that rifle. Uh, you must use your mill dots at the full power availability of the scope, which that one's like. Uh, 4 to 12 or 4 to 16 or whatever it is and uh, with an adjustable parallax which is really nice the parallax is you know basically the focus at the, uh, of the reticle and stuff uh, not a big term that you need to need need to know right now uh, and, and if, need to know in this point in the series of these these videos but uh, your mill dot reticle is effective at the maximum power of the scope. Now, you need to know what scope you're putting on your gun. Uh, is your scope, you know, a lot of military, you know, the original military quote unquote sniper scopes, in the Army anyway, uh, you know, they were 10 power scopes, so the mill dots were perfect at 10 power <clears throat> because they didn't use a, an adjustable scope at that time. And the difference between powers and scopes, and I'm going to get into this later too, but is basically if you have a 10 times scope, what that allows you to do is see effectively what you can see with the naked of eye at 100 yards at 1,000 yards. That's it. So if you have a 25 power scope, it will let you see with that 25 power scope at 2,500 yards what you see effectively at 100 yards with your eye. So the, the variance of power of scopes, people rely on it too much. Um, a lot of these things I'm seeing now, these guys getting into these 26, 28 power scopes, uh, cranking them way up. There are, There's very little room for error in your eyesight. Uh, most of the scopes that these guys are buying at, at those high powers are not quality. I mean, they're not a good piece of glass. Uh, you get a, a horrible mirage or it, it just cheap scopes usually aren't worth a whole lot you know that one there is a eighty hundred dollar scope for that rifle does just fine um, could I put a higher dollar piece of glass on it sure will I eventually probably but uh, you know right now I'm in more into building the gun and getting the gun to do what I want it to do than I have that I am worrying about what what it's being used for um, you know, it, it, that gun right there is kind of a work in progress. But, uh, you know, I have different uppers for that machine, or for that specific gun. I have a 20 inch barrel upper for it that's got a good piece of smitten mender glass on it. And, you know, that gun is ready to go with that 20 inch barrel. But when I decided I wanted to do this integrally suppressed uh, version, you know, I, I just, until I decided that I can make the gun do what I wanted to do, I'm not going to buy a high dollar piece of glass and put on that gun. Or more to the point, that upper. Uh, anyway, kind of got off subject. So, you know, these low ballistic computers will tell you, and this is good, you need to go back and watch the bullet drop and minute of angle videos if you haven't watched this, and if, if you don't understand it, that is. What that gun will tell you is that is quarter minute scope. That means for every click I put on that on one of them knobs on the top or on the right, that will introduce that'll change that bullet impact one quarter inch at a hundred yards. And we know from the minute of angle videos that a quarter inch at a hundred yards is a half inch at two hundred yards, three quarters of an inch at three hundred yards, a full inch at four hundred yards, two inches at eight hundred yards, uh, two and a half inches at a thousand yards, so on and so forth. Now what I run out of this gun is a 69 grain Sierra boat tail hollow point. Uh, because I've been to Sierra's websites, I know what the ballistic coefficient of that bullet is, I know how many grains I load in it, and I know what my basic muzzle velocity is based on my uh, 
my criteria, which like I said, is I fire 12 rounds through a chronograph, I throw out the high and the low, and I average the other 10. That's what I decided my velocity is. So, I keep all that information. That All of that information goes in my ballistics computer, under this gun, under this barrel, the whole nine yards. And that's the nice part about these ballistic computers, is you can keep multiple different guns in your ballistic computer. So I pick what gun I'm shooting, pick what round I'm shooting, and then the gun, or more to the point, the computer will tell me what the gun's going to do, based on the data I have put in it, observed from previous engagements. So when I went out and shot this gun at with what I call my true zero, which is where the gun is zeroed when I put the gun together, and I zero it, Boom, there is my zero. It will never deviate from that path uh, in the computer, as far as computer is concerned. So I log that information but <clears throat> with the same air temperature, altitude, <clears throat> uh, relative humidity, barometric pressures. All that stuff got logged into my computer when I zeroed that gun. So if I go out, you know, let's say for the sake of argument, I went out and I zeroed that gun in July in Oklahoma very very hot and it was we'll say 110 degrees that day that air is very thin therefore creates less wind resistance which will allow your bullet to fly further faster well it won't fly any faster but it'll, it'll fly, fly further in the same time period because the air density is not as thick therefore there is less drag created on the bullet so I go out to engage with that same gun at Let's say I take that gun and I, uh, well, all right, now we're going to take that gun and we're going to go to Colorado. Uh, we're going to go up into the mountains in March or January or February or whatever, and we're going to hunt, you know, uh, widgets or snipes. We're going snipe hunting in Colorado. So we go up to Colorado, we're going to go snipe hunting. Ultimately, what you should have to do is re-zero the gun because you have changed environments, you've massively changed altitude. Uh, there's going to be so much different, but as long as I can get my cell service enough to pull that information off of their server of where I'm at locally, what the temperature is, what the barometric pressures is, what my current altitude is, and all that stuff, it will do the math for me. Now, you still need to take it out and true it up. It's going to do the math generally, and it's going to be close, but you need to take it out do a couple shots, you know, if it says, okay, just immediately be closer, you know, I've got thinner air, less resistance, colder, more resistance, we're going to say, it tells me, from my true zero on my range in Oklahoma, when I get to Colorado, if I go to shoot that same 100 yards, all of a sudden it tells me, well, I need to put, <clears throat> uh, you know, five clicks on the scope. Move the bullet impact up five clicks just to be zeroed at 100 yards where I was in Oklahoma. But because of <clears throat> the difference in temperature, altitude, and all that, it decides that I am going to be shooting a uh, inch and a quarter low at 100 yards. I put that dope on the scope. I go out. I shoot that engagement. But it actually, you know, I get, I, I fire my three, five, seven, however you do your your zero rounds, and I decide that I'm actually that an inch and a quarter was too many, that them five clicks was too many. I actually needed, we'll say, three quarters of an inch. So what I will do is I will take and I will readjust and I will tell the ballistics computer, no, you know, that was a good guess. Inch and a quarter was a good guess, but it was a little off. It was actually three quarters of an inch. What it will do is it will take that data and apply it to the rest of the calculations to understand that now when I'm in, you know, in Colorado, you know, it thought an inch and a quarter to 100 yards was what the bullet deviation was going to be, and it was actually three quarters of an inch, which doesn't sound like a whole lot when you're shooting at snipes, right? However, when you start going out, remember our minute of angle. Three quarters of an inch at 100 yards <coughs> translates to an inch and a half at 200 yards. Three inches at 400 yards, just the same way the minute of angle works. So that little bit of deviation in the bullet, as you translate out into them longer ranges, is going to affect your bullet impact on the way out. So, 
you know, the ballistic computers, if you were gonna if you were even thinking about getting in any kind of long range shooting, you absolutely need to know get one. Uh, get a portable one. I know there's a bunch of them on the internet that you can look at on a computer screen, but you're not gonna take a computer out with you shooting. Uh, if you've got a smartphone, download a good one. If you don't, you can go get these PDAs right now cheap. You can you the just stupid Windows per PDAs, you can get them cheap. Now I'm not gonna tell you that good ballistic software isn't cheap or is cheap, but uh, you know it's what you want to put into it. It's another tool in your bag. You can go spend eight thousand dollars on a rifle, two thousand dollars on a piece of glass, do all the shooting in the world, but if you don't either a know the math or B, willing to put the money into a ballistics computer, you have a very expensive paperweight because you are not going to be able to effectively use that gun at ranges over three or four or five hundred yards. Will you be able to hit, you know, bigger targets, cars, houses, you know, boulders, whatever? Probably. Uh, some people can guess it enough. Some people are a good enough shooter. But if you want to get into taking precision shots at extended ranges, you know, there, there's guys pushing these AR-15s out, you know, damn near a thousand yards right now. Uh, they're taking the 308 and they're pushing that thing out 12, 13, 14, 1500 yards. Uh, so they're doing some pretty impressive things with long range rifles nowadays. Uh, other things you need to keep in mind when you go looking for a piece of glass. Uh, you know, I, I'm always, that that's probably the biggest question is mil dot a mil dot no matter what power you're looking through. Uh, the answer is sometimes. Uh, you know, on most scopes, most of the scopes you're going to run across, you need to be on maximum power for your mil dots to be used effectively. Uh, so, the average scope, the answer is no. Now, if the reticle happens to be on the first focal plane of the scope, then yes. <clears throat> yeah, a mil dot will always be a mil dot no matter what power you're looking at. Now, again, that is only if it's on the first focal plane. And how you'll know that is if you look at, say, a house that you know is 200 yards away. And when you throw that gun up at your minimum power, which we'll say is like 3 power, for the sake of argument, and that house takes up a full mil dot. Or 2. We'll say it's 2 for the sake of argument. So you throw that gun up at whatever range you're standing at right there on the lowest power, and there is, you know, the roof's at the top of the one mil dot, and the base of the house is at the bottom of the other mil dot, and then you crank it to nine power, ten power, whatever power you have, and you put that gun back in the same place. If that, if the uh, house takes up the, the exact same number of mils, roof at the top of one mil dot floor at the bottom of another uh, of the second mil dot then yes you're a, you have a first focal plane reticle and a mil dot will always be a mil dot in that scope uh, basically what will happen is your as your uh, if you look at it in minimum power and you throw the gun up to your you know to your head and look down through the scope and if you crank that scope down as if the image that you are seeing gets bigger of the dog or the cat or whatever you're looking at gets bigger. If the distance in your eyes of the of the mil dots gets bigger, as like it's the like the scope reticle is coming closer to your eyes, have you, then yes, you are on the first focal plane. Uh, if only the image gets bigger, then no, you do not have a first focal plane reticle, and your reticle is probably only a true mil at maximum power. But like I said, you need to get out a get out your manual on that scope when you bought it, and figure out at, at what point in that scope's magnification is you know a one mil radiant truly one mil radiant because there's only that one place. That, and if you don't know what that is, you'll never be able to use that scope effectively. Because if you were running at say ten power and it's a four to twelve power scope, and you're and we're going to say that a mil is only at 10 power on your scope, which most of them will be marked if that's the case. There'll be a little notch or something at 10 power that'll, you know, that's trying to tell you that that's where a mill is a mill. But if you don't know that, 
and you're running that scope all the way up to 12 power and you're doing your math based on mills, you're never going to be right and it's going to frustrate you. So you need to know what your equipment's doing, you need to know what it is. Uh, I suggest you go with either U.S. Army or Marine Corps mills and you stick with them. Don't go back and forth between scopes. Now some people say it's not a big deal. I kind of think it is. Uh, just me. There is a difference between Marine Corps mill dots and U.S. Army mill dots. Uh, very minor difference, but it's still there. Uh, so anyway, let's quit run down on what doping the scope means, uh, doping the slope means. There's a bunch of good information out there on the internet. There's also a bunch of bullshit out there on the internet. Uh, look, as with all my videos, I suggest that you either A, go out and try this and make sure I'm not lying to you, or B, fact check me against something else. Uh, don't believe just everything you hear on the internet. Uh, don't, you know, when you can find data that's printed that you can find somewhere else that's printed again and you've got a couple people to agree with it, then yeah, you probably got good information. Go to reputable sites. Find people just because Bob Bob Army Sniper on some stupid website has great ratings and he's got five stars under his name does not make him an expert. Uh, nor do I claim to be an expert. I am telling you the basics here, boys and girls. Uh, I, I know what I know. I am no by no no standards the best in the business at this, and I do not claim to be. Uh, I'm okay. I can hold my own. Uh, but, you know, if you want to get out and truly, you know, some people want to get out and do long-range engagements because, you know, they're fascinated with the military cons ide idealism. Uh, some people want to get out and hunt prairie dogs or coyotes at longer, at longer ranges and, and, and they're tired of missing the dogs at 300, 400, 500, 600 yards and they don't understand why they're missing at those ranges. Uh, it's actually what that gun right there was designed to do. That gun was set up to, the gun, they have, it made it legal, lawful, to hunt uh, with a suppressor in this state now. So that's going to be my new Predator gun. Uh, with the suppressor hunting coyotes will be a lot more fun, uh, I think. Anyway, anyway. Uh, Go out and fact check the information, all these videos, please. If I'm wrong, come tell me I'm wrong. But if you come to tell me I'm wrong, have some facts to back it up. Don't just get on there and go, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm super sniper. I was, you know, I killed 18,000 people in Iraq last week. No, I don't want to hear that bullshit. Everybody, no, I'm tired of it. I'm so tired of it. But, uh, and I want to leave you with, you know, the information, and this is the shitty part about this, in firearms you get what you pay for. If you were going to buy a cheap rifle and put a cheap scope on it and put cheap ammunition through it, you are going to have very poor results. If you're willing, you know, and I'm not saying cheap as in expensive. Sometimes, you know, I don't have any problem with that little $80 scope for the engagements I'm doing with it. Would I try and run that scope at 1,000 yards? No. It's not even very good at 700 yards. 600 yards. But I'm going to, when I've got that gun dialed down and I decided, you know what, this is what I want, I'll put a good piece of glass on it. What I'll probably do is put, I will take that gun and I will throw that Schmidt on it. See, that's, that's the thing, guys. You, I see these guys go out and they spend, you know, six $800 per scope on per rifle. Go out, buy yourself one good piece of glass. Go buy a good Smith & Bender or a good, you know, the high dollar low pulse. Whatever you're going to buy, get one good set of mounts. Um, you know, LaRue, probably the best mounts going. Uh, I don't work for LaRue or Smith & Bender. But go buy yourself a good quick detach LaRue mount, a good good piece of glass, whether it's the Night Force or a good piece of glass. <clears throat> Do a true zero on the scope, which means you need to find out, let's say if it's a 60 minute scope, you've got 30 minutes up and 30 minutes down. Find the center of that scope. 
okay? You found the center of that scope. That is true zero. It never changes. Put the knobs on zero. Lock it, lock it. There you go. That is zero. Never move them scopes. Now, if you do your range card on your gun from the beginning, for each gun you have from true zero of the scope, in the Army they call this on the M16, battle sight zero. If you think back, if you were in the Army. So if you battle sight zero that, that Smith and Bender scope, take it, put it on SAR-15. Now I know, you know, take a shot. Okay, I am whatever I am off on that on that shot. Adjust the scope to true zero. Mark that down in your calculator. We're on the gun. Take a little piece of paper, put it on the side of the scope, put it on the gun. Okay, from battle sight zero or true zero on this scope, I gotta go right five clicks and up nine. Now that scope is zeroed at 100 yards for that gun. Take it off that gun, put it back on true zero. Take it over and you put it on, like let's say you got a Remington 700 308. Drop that cement on that thing, lock it down, it's on battle tight zero, pull up your ballistics calculator, your piece of paper for that gun. Okay, it's nine clicks left, 14 clicks down. <laughs> click, click. You're good to go. You're back at a, because a good scope isn't like these cheap scopes, guys, that when, oh my god, I bumped it, now I'm going to have to take it out and re-zero. You get a good piece of glass, something like a Smith and Bender, one click is one click, and it always will be going to click. I'm, am I telling you that it's, uh, you know, you get these guys that go out and they'll spend $100 on 15 different scopes, or 30 different scopes for 30 different guns. Buy one damn good scope, and transfer it back and forth between your guns. That way you have a good piece of glass on all your guns. You can only shoot one at a time, I don't give a shit. You know, I gave to, well, I need to have this gun effective, and this gun, I need to be able to have this gun up, and this gun up. That's fine. Go buy your Walmart scopes if you want a 100-yard, you know, deer rifle or whatever. But if you're going to have different long-range guns, and everyone's going to have a different pr purpose, you can only shoot one at a time. Get that one piece of glass, and then you can, you know, if you want to put it on the 308, 330, you know, 338 Lapua, come over to these AR, form, AR platforms, go back and put it on, you know, if you're buying a, if you got a surgeon rifle, Change the scope around. Spend three or four or five thousand dollars on one good piece of glass, and be done with it. Uh, sorry about the little rant. I just I, I see these guys all the time. They'll go out and they'll buy four or five six thousand dollar rifle, and then they'll go put a four or five six thousand dollar piece of glass on it, and that's awesome. And then they'll go try and buy another gun or they want to buy they'll tell you they want to buy another gun but they don't have the money to you know buy the gun and put a piece of glass on it don't buy the gun and move the glass around find true battle sight zero of that or you know true zero of that scope and move it around sorry about the rant uh you know the last thing you can, just to iterate on that, reiterate on that, and you can do it with any, there's also what they call sight rails. You'll see these sight rails are 5 minute rails, 10 minute, 15, 20, whatever. What that does is, like I said, there are, you know, on a, uh, let's say on your scope you have, you know, 60 minutes of adjustment up and down. So at true zero you're in the middle at, you know, got 30 up and 30 down. If you introduce a 20 minute rail, what you're doing is giving yourself more up elevation. The ability to go up further. So if you are running a gun, and let's say you're running at a, at a, a zero MOA rail, and that gives you 30 minutes of up and 30 minutes of down, but you want more up out of it for whatever reason, you throw that 20 minute rail on there, re-zero the rifle, now you have 10 minutes down and 50 minutes up. Because it doesn't give you 50 more minutes. You know, some people think you have, you know, if you put throw that 20 minute rail on there, you'll have, you'll still have that 30 down, but you've got that 20 minute rail, so you'll have 50 up. It doesn't work that way. Uh, it's math. You only have what you have to start with. So if you've got 60 minutes, all you're doing is moving that 60 minutes up 20 minutes. Uh, and like I said, if you don't understand what minute of angle is, please go check out the other videos. they will be in the description. Anyway, I'm Mac from Double Tap Shooting School. I hope you appreciated the video. Uh, please check out the other videos in the series. There's going to be more coming. I'm going to, you know, 
put some videos up about you know using the mil dot reticle and figuring out your ballistic coefficients on paper as opposed to using a ballistic calculator because I think you know need to know how to do it. Uh, questions, comments, things I missed in the video that you need to know, or whatever, please put them down there in the bottom. Like I said, if you come to me claiming to be super expert, you better be able to back it up. Uh, I will not take. You know, I was a special forces sniper in Vietnam and horseshit. Everybody is, uh, apparent according to the internet. So uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, got questions or comments? Please, I'll t if I will try and get you the answer. If I don't know the answer, I will point you to the person that does. So uh, appreciate you guys watching and have a good day.